بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا من سيئات أعمالنا من يحده الله فلا مدل له ومن يدلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الحدي حدي محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وأحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي after praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sending immense greetings and salutations upon the final Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam who unfortunately tonight happens to be a discussion of contention amongst those individuals who claim to love the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam those individuals who believe in the extreme view of love and devotion that they are the only individuals who champion the cause and the message of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This excessive concept that we find of their love and their devotion has led them to actually defame, to belittle and disrespect the beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We find that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has been mentioned inside the Quran that his time span upon this world will come to an end. Thus we find that the ulama have collected that the greatest calamity that struck this blessed ummah was the death of the Prophet Muhammad That is the ultimate calamity. For amongst all the calamities that even that we face today, they are to be belittled. They hold no weight in the years of warfare and bloodshed and turmoil and corruption that we find around us. They are minimal calamities in comparison to the death of the blessed Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, as the Quran it mentions, "Wama Muhammadun illa Rasul, qad khalat min qablihi Rasul." Who is the messenger of Allah, except for one of the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa taala? Qad khalat min qablihi Rasul. Indeed, before him, many messengers have come before him. If he is to die, or he is to be slain in the way of Allah subhanahu wa taala, are you individuals going to turn back upon your heels? Are you going to become ungrateful towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? These are the ayat that were recited by Abu Bakr as-Siddiq addressing this Muslim ummah that the journey of the messenger has to come to an end. Likewise, he mentioned a verse in the Quran, إِنَّكَ مَيِّتٌ وَإِنَّهُمْ مَيِّتُونَ Indeed, directly, khitab lil Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you are going to die. You're going to come to an end upon this dunya. وَإِنَّهُمْ مَيِّتُونَ And likewise, everybody else upon this world will end. Their time will come to return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thus we find that this blind love that these people claim to have towards a messenger, that blind love only belongs to the companions who really understood what it meant to be the, the loss of the Prophet Muhammad has been taken away from them. Thus Umar ibn Khattab when he heard that the messenger has left this world, he believed and he highlighted indeed he's gone to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just like Musa السلام, went to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and returned back after certain days. And he said, if any individual highlights that the messenger has left this world, has departed from this world, then I will decapitate his head. I will chop his head off basically. And thus you find Abu Bakr once again to highlight, to teach this Muslim ummah. Whoever worships Muhammad وسلم, we are not Muhammadans. We don't worship the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu Whoever used to worship him, فَقَدْ مَاتْ وَمَنْ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ حَيٌّ لَا يَمُوتْ Whoever worships Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the eternal, the absolute, the ever-living subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are words that need to be written with gold ink and they need to be engraved inside our hearts. We don't worship the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu as the orientalists they write and these people begin to display that we are worshippers, we are ashq rasul we are deeply engrossed in our love and our commitment towards the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu 
And thus you find that this concept of ghulu fi rasul to take him excessive amounts of belief and love and devotion. Al ghulu tajawuz al had to go beyond the parameters, to go beyond the limits which have been laid down inside the Sharia. Who better to explain to us what is the meaning of al ghulu, excessive love, excessive praise, none other than the blessed Prophet Muhammad himself. No one can contend with his blessed words. Whereby you highlight inside the hadith of Bukhari, La taturuni kama atrat in Nasara Isa ibn Maryam. Don't begin to extol me. Don't begin to praise me. Just like you find the Christians began to praise Isa ibn Maryam. They began to give him this rank and this prestige of claiming that he is also, he is God or he becomes the son of God. فَإِنَّمَا أَنَا عَبْدُهُ Indeed, I'm only his servant. فَقُولُوا عَبْدُ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولُهُ Say the Messenger of Allah, the servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Likewise, he mentioned amongst his final words, وَلَا تَجْعَلُوا قَبْرِ عِيدًا مِنْ بَعْدِ أَوْ كَمَا قَالْ صلى الله عليه وسلم. Don't let my grave become a place of visitation. الْعِيد بمعنى عادة يعيد Something which occurs, reoccurs again and again. Don't let my grave become a point of celebration or a point whereby people come on an annual basis, come towards my grave. These are documented according to ulama of hadith amongst the, the final words highlighted by the Prophet Muhammad and warning the curse be upon Al-Yahud. One Nasara took the place of the death of the Anbiya, Masajida, took them as places of worship or spiritual blessings, began to extol and praise them to this higher limit. This is the messenger himself highlighting, teaching this Muslim Ummah. No one can challenge these words, that these words mean another intent. Or he was humbling himself, or he's giving another message. The words of the Prophet Muhammad are quite concise, are classified as Jawamiul Kalim. Clear words, small words, which have a deep meaning that no one can begin to twist and turn his meanings to say it means something else. Likewise, you find the Quran highlights, Ya Ahl al Kitab, La taghlu fi dinikum, wa la taqulu ala Allahi illa al haq. The Quran warns Ahlul Kitab inside Surah An Nisa, O oh, people of the book, La taghlu fi dinikum. Do not become excessive in your deen, in your belief. Wala taqulu ala Allahi illa al haq. Do not attribute to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, do not say about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except for that which is the truth. Then again inside Surah Al Ma'idah, a slight change that we find, this time directly telling the Prophet Muhammad to speak to the people. To announce to the people, قُلْ يَا أَهْلَ الْكِتَابِ لَا تَغْلُوا فِي دِينِكُمْ قُلْ بِمَعْنَى يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ قُلْ لِلنَّاسِ Say to the people, لَا تَغْلُوا فِي دِينِكُمْ Don't ex any become excessive inside your deen. Likewise in a hadith in the Sunnah of Ibn Majah, إِيَّاكُمْ وَالْغُلُوا فِي الدِّينِ Woe upon you. Be careful and stay away from becoming excessive in your deen and your belief towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and even more so here towards the Prophet Muhammad Likewise, you find inside Surah Al-Ma'idah, which many of these ayat are collected from Surah Al-Ma'idah because the Khalfiyah, the background of Surah Al-Ma'idah is talking about Al-Yahud, one Nasara, is talking about the Jews and the Christians and the way that they responded towards the Anbiya and the words they began to attribute towards these Anbiya. Thus, you find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, Ya Yaya Rasul, Ballik ma unzila ilayka min rabbi. Wa illam taf'al, fama ballakta risalatahu. Our messenger convey to the people of the message which has been delivered to you. If you do not convey the message, then you have not fulfilled that trust. And then the ayah concludes by mentioning, Allah will protect you from mankind. The messenger وسلم, needs no individual, needs no individual to come and to defend his honor and his dignity. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has lifted it for himself subhanahu wa ta'ala and highlighted Wallahu ya'simu kamin al nas Allah will protect you forever from whatever the people utter towards you. And thus you find the hadith of Bukhari Man kadaba alayya muta'ammidan fal yatabawwa maq'adu min al nar Whoever attributes a lie to me intentionally let him take his seat in the hellfire. Qawlu rasul sallallahu alayhi wa Let him take his seat in the hellfire. These individuals, these deviant individuals Ma yafhamun al Quran. Don't understand the Quran. Don't understand the Sunnah. They say, La nukadib alayhi nukadib lahu. We don't lie upon him. We lie for the sake of the Messenger. We make up these false tales, these false stories, these mawduat, whatever it may be, to defend the honor and the rank of the Prophet Muhammad sallam. The Quran is telling us, Wallahu yasimu kamin al nas. Quran is telling us, Allah will protect you. 
You don't need to make up your fables and your stories and your myths and your legends and say this is the way to defend the honor and the rank of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Likewise, inside the same surah that we find right inside the beginning, which seals the whole message for every single individual. Al-Maida, the third verse. This day, I have completed all of my favors upon you and chosen for you Islam as your way of life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, this day I have completed Islam for you. If something is complete, and then you might want to highlight that something is missing, something is deficient, something has been forgotten, or something needs to be added, all of this goes against the verse of the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying Islam is complete. That's it, finish. There's no niqash. There's no discussion about what needs to be added or what needs to be taken out. It's a word from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Islam is perfect, is complete, nothing needs to be added or subtracted away from the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Likewise, we find inside Surah Al-Ma'idah, a verse of contention for these individuals, قَدْ جَاءَكُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ نُورٌ وَكِتَابٌ مُبِينٌ Indeed, there's come from you, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, نُور وَكِتَابٌ مُبِينٌ Light and a clear book. They try to make ta'wil of this ayah, nur bi ma'na, the nur is referring to the messenger. Wahum aqilla, a minority amount of ulama, of mufassirun, has said that the nur is referring to the messenger. Even though we know that the Quran mentions he is siraj munira, he is the blazing sun. So why don't you attribute he is the blazing sun? Why do you select that he is only the nur? And even all those ahadith which we mentioned, that the messenger was created from the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or the light was broken into four fragments, separate fragments that one light was given to this type of creation, that type of creation and finally the light was extracted and from that light you find the messenger all of these are innovative narrations attributed to the Prophet Muhammad innovative narrations that there's no shadow for the Prophet Muhammad the meaning of nur here is clear, is ataf wa kitabu mubin is referring to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Likewise, you find these people that begin to say, لو لك, لو لك, ما خلقت ال, يعني, أفلاق. If it wasn't for you, wasn't for you, we have not even created the heavens and the earth. This is the kufr that they attribute to the Prophet Muhammad Al-Busri in his burda, these al-qasaid, that you find lines of poetry, وَعِنْدَكَ الْعِلْمَ اللَّوْحِ وَالْقَلَمِ The many of these individuals, they chant at these lines of poetry, they sing them, they memorize them, they go into hallucinations with them. These are words of clear kufr, what Busri wrote in his al-Burda, the famous mantle, the famous cloak, that he claimed that the messenger came to him and shrouded him with his blessed cloak. وَعِنْدَكَ عِلْمَ اللَّوْحِ وَالْقَلَمِ To you belongs, Ya Rasulullah, the knowledge of the pen and the guarded tablet. You have the knowledge of the unseen. This is the essence of their belief, that he has the knowledge of al-ghayb al-mutlaq, the total unseen, has been showered upon the Messenger Sallallahu That's the crux of the aqeedah, of their belief that they believe in. That he has the knowledge of the five unseen matters. That no one has that knowledge except for Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala. But they believe that knowledge has been bestowed upon the Blessed Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Likewise, we find another contentious verse for these individuals at Surah Al-Ma'idah, verse number 35. Ya Oh, you believe? Fear Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala. وَابْتَغُوا إِلَيْهِ الْوَسِيلَ Find a wasila, a way to get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You find جُمْهُورُ ulama, جُمْهُورُ الْمُفَسِّرِينَ Contentious all amount of ulama. As Imam al-Shanqiti Adwal al-Bayani mentions, that the only tafsir of this ayah to be understood from this verse is seek ways of coming close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by sticking to awamir, sticking to the commands, stay away from the prohibitions, and doing good actions and calling upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Likewise, ala ra'sihim, Imam al-Mufassirin ibn Kathir, if you read tafsir this ayah in Surah Al-Ma'idah, says that the way of tawassul, al-ja'iz, according to the sunnah, is according to those three individuals who were trapped inside a cave, inside a crevice, inside the hadith of Bukhari. This is a correct understanding of wasila. As for these individuals, they believe that the way of wasila is an ta'khud shaykhan, or imaman, wa yakun wasilan baynaka wa bayna rabbika. You take the shaykh, you take the imam, you take your spiritual leader, and he becomes the bridging gap between you and your creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a, an incorrect belief that we find. That this type of belief, that just to take some link, or to believe that the messenger will openly intercede for every single individual. The use of the blessed name of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu will suffice us. That you find it, they mention many strange narrations. That when Adam alayhi salam, 
when he erred, he made the mistake. And he repented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In his repentance, we just heard the recitation in the Quran mentioned, فَتَلَقَّ آدَمُ مِنْ رَبِّهِ كَلِمَاتٍ فَتَابَ عَلَيْهِ إِنَّهُ وَالتَّوَّابُ الرَّحِيمُ Adam alayhi salam received some words of inspiration from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted his repentance. These words of inspiration are mentioned later on inside Surah Al-A'raf. قَالَ Both of them said, Adam and Hawa alayhi salam. رَبَّنَا ظَلَمْنَا أَنفُسَنَا وَإِن لَمْ تَغْفِرْ لَنَا وَتَرْحَمْنَا لَنَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ That's the dua mentioned by them. According to the Quran, by Adam and Hawa alayhi salam. These individuals that begin to highlight, Adam alayhi salam, he saw the Arsh of Rahman and he visualized the name Muhammad. And he said by the name of Muhammad, forgive me, pardon me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, how do you know this name? That's awwalan qawlul kufr. How can you say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how does Allah, how do you know this name? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows, has all knowledge. And his name was there and via his name, he was forgiven. And thus you find that this form of intercession is their belief. Like as you find amongst their belief, whoever carries the name Muhammad, whoever has a father names his son Muhammad, then that individual will go into paradise. Khurafat, misguided statements, fabricated narrations that you find a person who keeps the name Muhammad will automatically be destined to go into paradise or intercession will be allowed for this individual. When you hear his blessed name, for you to kiss your fingers or to kiss your thumbs and to rub your eyes, you will never suffer from any ailment in your life. Mawdu'at, mawdu, hadith mawdu, fabricated, la aslalahu, as Ibn Jawzi mentions inside his al-mawdu'at, and many of the ulama have collected this, this wording. All fabricated statements, that when you hear his blessed name, to kiss your thumbs and to rub it upon your eyes, there will be no ailment, no sickness inside your eyes, is a fabricated lie attributed to the blessed Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And likewise, you find this concept of taking a wasila, to have an intermediary in this dunya, you go to someone in superior position, you go to the imam, you go to the leader, you go to the minister to get to the king, whatever it may be. This is the, the affair of the dunya. This is not the way that you have your relationship towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Quran mentions, وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمُ ادْعُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ The Quran says, your Lord says, call upon me and I'll respond to your call. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not say, go through this individual, ask this individual, or ask that pious individual, and then you'll find a response with me. And the most evident proof inside the Quran, because throughout the Quran, there's a science of the Quran. Every time the people pose a question to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu they asked him various questions. يَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الْخَمْرِ وَالْمَيْسِرِ They ask you about drinking alcohol. They ask you about gambling. يَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الْمَحِيدِ They ask you about the menstrual cycle. يَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الْأَهِلَّةِ They ask you about the crescent. They ask you about the ruh, about the soul, about the spirit. They asked him so many questions, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Throughout the Quran, manhaj al-Quran is always to respond, قُلْ قُلْ فِيهِمَا إِثْمٌ كَبِيرٌ Say inside them there's a great sin in the taking of alcohol and gambling. Say قُلْ هُوَ أَذَا Say in the menstrual cycle there's a harm for the woman. They are, say there's harm in this. Say he's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the one and only. Say to the disbelievers. That is the methodology throughout the Quran. There's only one location inside the Quran, inside Surah Al-Baqarah. Some verse 183 or 184 so that we find. وَإِذَا عِبَادِي عَنِّي If the servant asks about me, the Quran does not say فَقُلْ إِنِّي قَرِيبِ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ Quran does not say that. It doesn't say that. Because some people could come along and say, look, we can use the messenger. The Quran says فَإِنِّي قَرِيبِ عُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَان فَلْيُؤْمِنُوا بِي لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْشَدُونَ Let them believe in me. Call upon me that they may be rightly guided. وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِ عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ عُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَانٌ فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُوا لِي وَلْيُؤْمِنُوا بِي لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْشُدُونَ Quran is clear. Language the Quran is clear. They ask about me. They ask about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't say, O Messenger, to the people. Just say directly. Allah says, فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ I am close by. Whatever type of Muslim you are. You're a sinful Muslim. You're a bad Muslim, you're a good Muslim, you're a pious Muslim, you're an impious individual. Raise your hands to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, call upon me and I'll respond to your call. You need no intermediary. This Islam is not a life of Catholicism. It's not a life of Christianity that you need a saint. You need a person to find the track to get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is all the infusion of Catholicism that's fallen into Islam. Greek logic, Greek myths that you find. 
Hindu culture and ritual practices that begin to develop inside Islam, that people begin to think that the way to come close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is via these intermediaries. This is a belief which is batil, a belief which is false, which goes against the belief in the oneness in calling upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Likewise, we find to complete the verse that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu attaqullah wa abtaghu ilayhi wasila wa jahidu fi sabilihi la'allakum tuflihun The verse mentions wa jahidu fi sabilihi Are these individuals striving and struggling in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Read the history of these individuals. Their history is to strive and struggle in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to defend al-Islam, to defend the Quran, to defend ahadith. What are their services towards Islam? To destroy Islam to dismantle Islam, to weaken the approach of the Sunnah, to make people to stay away from the orthodox views of the Quran and the Sunnah. And amongst these individuals that you find, read and study the culture of these people, or the people that they, these people that they follow, is Ahmad Raza Khan Al-Brailwi. This is the supreme leader. This is the ultimate leader. This is the great saint, the great sheikh that they follow, they inspire to. That's the attribute to themselves that we are Al-Brailwiyun. That's what they attribute to themselves of following this individual through his life. And what are the roots of this individual? They call him Allah Hazrat, the great blessed individual. And even himself, he says, don't call me by the name of my father. He says, call me Abdul Mustafa. Call me the servant of Mustafa. That's not the name given by his parents or his grandfather. He changes and says, call me the servant of Mustafa. This is not allowed in Islam. We are not the servants of Mustafa. We are the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The best names in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are Abdullah and Abdul Rahman, not Abdul Mustafa. None of the companions ever changed the name to Abdul Mustafa. No individual changed the name to Abdul Mustafa to be the servant of Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's you find this individual, many of the ulama have collected, either had Shia roots, strong family Shia roots, like you find a Qadiani background, one amongst his teachers, was the, the brother of Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani used to teach this individual. They believe this individual is infallible. That's what they believe. This individual never ever made mistakes. Allah's pleasure lies with the Prophet's pleasure. And the Prophet's pleasure lies with the pleasure of Raza. Like what you find, the grant of the creation is Ahmad Raza. You are the one who removes my difficulties, Ahmad Raza. Who gives me, who has given. Whatever was given, you have given Ahmad Raza. In both worlds is your support. Yes, help me, Shah Ahmad Raza. In Hashar, when there will be the heat of Qiyamah, hide and cover me, Ahmad Raza. When the tongues become dry of thirst, give me a drink from Qawthar, O Ahmad Raza. Help accompany me inside my grave and in resuscitation on the day of Hashar. You are the one who removes my difficulties, Ahmad Raza. You are the giver and I am your receiver. I am yours and you are mine, Ahmad Raza. Pure kufr. Pure shirk, that's what it is. This is what they attribute to this individual that you find. Likewise, he says to his own followers to praise him and he highlights himself. At times he uses, this is supposed to be a great scholar, a great reviver. He calls himself a dog. Why should someone listen to you, O Raza? Dogs like you roam around in thousands. No one asks about you and no one cares about you because the dogs like you are numerous. I am the dog. Hadaiq Bakshish, page number five. This is supposed to be a great spiritual leader. No real scholar will downgrade himself and say, I am a dog. Anal Kalb. I am a dog. And there's many dogs that roam around the streets. These various blunders are documented. Wasiyat Sharif that you find, what he says is his wasiya, his legacy, that when I die, this is what you need to do upon my life. Bring chicken biryani, bring kebabs, bring firni, bring cream soda, bring ice milk, buffalo milk on my grave. Bring it on my grave is what he writes. So this, what you find these celebrations around them, don't think they're strange. A dead man is saying that when I die, bring it to my grave. For who? Who's going to eat that food? And that's you find Ur Sharif, the 11th day that you find Yarmi Sharif that they believe in. Go and study the history of Yarmi Sharif because they attribute to Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani, who are bari. He's free from what they attribute to him. They said that he used to celebrate the birthday of the Prophet Muhammad the 12th of Rabi al Awwal. He was vigilant of that. So the messenger blessed him with what? Yarmi Sharif. Gave him the 11th. That that's the day for you, Peer Abdul Qadir Jilani. What else do they attribute to him? Abdul Qadir Jilani, the famous Sheikh of Baghdad, is walking on the street. You know, these people, they love dogs for some reason. A dog sees Abdul Qadir Jilani and falls down on his back and says, Ya Sheikh, Ana Adu, I'm going to make dua. You make dua, I'll say Ameen. This is supposed to be spiritual enlightenment. A dog lies on his back and makes dua. 
or the sheikh makes dua and the dog says ameen this shows your spiritual ranking that's all that their life is full of people are al-hallaj read the life of al-hallaj the beliefs that he had i am infused with the creator with god just like wine is infused with water they all come together these are the people that they believe in ibn arabi that you find who believes in wahdatul wujud pantheism i become one with god everything is god i am within god and god is me when you see me you see god i'm nothing but god and al-haq who al-batil who al-kafir ulama declared ibn arabi no ibn al-arabi with ta'rif the famous maliki spanish scholar that you find ibn arabi is declared to be a disbeliever these are the people they look up to ibn arabi al-hallaj al-rumi all these other individuals they become the people they look up to begin to admire them begin to read their works begin to promote their works and to advocate these discrepancies amongst any that these are the real individuals to be followed did the prophet muhammad when the death of his blessed daughters did he ever offer yarmi sharif did he ever offer it when hamza his uncle died did he offer yarmi sharif when a number of his companions died did he ever offer yarmi sharif did he say to his companions bring food together let us pray upon our blessed companions let us call upon allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon them did he say that did he not have the means did he not have the ability did he have a lack of love towards his own daughters did he have a lack of love towards hamza did he have a lack of love towards his own blessed uncle did he have a la lack of love towards his blessed companions so now for some reason you seem to have a more better love and approach towards the people yani, around you these people are individuals destroyed the deen these words may sound very very harsh these are the people who allied with the western world these are the people documented according to western empire themselves there are two individuals we sought their aid and their assistance to take out the muslims at that time in the british raj it was either the use of ahmad riza al brailwi that we find or we find ghulam ahmad al qadiani these are the two individuals that we use these individuals and their beliefs to destroy the muslims these people want to turn around and say it's you al wahhabiyun you are the people who are the stooges of imperialism yes today you may find certain elements that certain people in authority may begin to look towards the western world and become stooges towards them but they try to attribute to sheikh muhammad ibn abdul wahhab that this is an individual who made an alliance with the west though the individual they're trying to refer to is referring to the kingdomship at the moment of king ibn saud that we find who came in the year 1933 when he took over the hijaz the arabian peninsula they're trying to refer to that and refer that back to muhammad ibn abdul wahhab Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab at that time America came into existence when the 4th of July 1777 at that time only a few years old was America so where was the alliance with Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab where was the alliance with him there was no real development of America he became an American agent is what they tried to highlight any about this any individual and we find that these people they try to attribute that these people they don't love the messenger these Wahhabiyun, these Ahlul Hadith, these Asalafiyun, they don't love the Messenger. They're Qasirin. They're deficient in their love towards the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's what they try to highlight. We are the real lovers. We are the real people who have that real love towards him. You know, as a side point, we go and study that if it was allowed to build the tomb of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, because according to their incorrect belief that you find Manzara Qabri, Wajibat lahu shafa'ati hadith munkar whoever visits my grave it becomes incumbent upon me to intercede for that individual likewise whoever man hajja wa lam yazur qabri faqad jafani whoever performs hajj and doesn't visit my grave has given disrespect towards me hadith mawdu hadith munkar likewise whoever does, comes to medina and doesn't pray for eight days doesn't offer the 40 prayers has not fulfilled the rites this, these are all ahadith, all ahadith which are rejected by the ulama. This is what their basis of their faith is, of rejected statements to highlight we are the real individuals who show love and devotion towards the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu These people who are in charge of governing that area, whoever those people may be, they could build right today from the blessed grave of the Prophet Muhammad all the way to the heavens they wanted to. These people have spent 50 billion riyals, 50 billion riyals in refurbishing the blessed precincts of Mecca and Medina. No one can stop them today to build a golden ladder from the blessed tomb of the Prophet Muhammad all the way to the heavens. No one can prevent them. They can throw that money if they wanted to do it. The only thing that prevents them is what? Is the Sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the only thing. So don't think that your love is better than their love. 
or you show, show more right and more discipline and respect towards the Prophet Muhammad You find, what do they blame us upon us? You classify him as a human being. You say, who al Bashar? You say he's a human being. We don't say he's a human being. The Quran documents he's a human being. Yes, he's a human being externally, but we believe that internally he had those special powers that were given to him, that special ability, that special belief, that special strength, that special insight. Don't try to twist our words and say that we are being disrespectful to the Prophet Muhammad I'm saying, who al Bashar. He's only a human being. We only narrate the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Quran mentions, وَمَا جَعَلْنَا لِبَشَرٍ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ الْخُلْدِ we have never ever placed for any human being to have immortality. Every single human being, as we began, will die. That's the words of the Quran. Every Bashar will come to an end. If you die, do you think they're going to live for eternity? Every Bashar, every human being in the external form will come to an end. Likewise, we find every human being has been created with a body. With a normal body, they have to eat, they have to drink. And likewise, they will never ever live for eternity. Likewise, you find inside the same surah, inside Surah Al-Anbiya, Allah SWT mentions, We're going to destroy, we're going to destroy the batil, destroy the falsehood. Take it away, blot it out as if it doesn't exist. We're going to blot out the batil of what these people try to attribute towards the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in specifically towards the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And even at the end of the surah it mentions, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ We do not send you except for the mercy to all of the worlds. Point simply, you have nothing to teach us about the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu There's nothing you can offer us. There's nothing you can teach us today. And there's nothing, nothing ever in your lives that you can ever come and teach the real Ahlul Sunnah about the love and the devotion towards the Prophet Muhammad There's nothing you can teach us. We know everything about his life that's been documented. You cannot come and tell us and teach us today that the earth does not take away his body. The earth does not eat away his body. We know that according to Ahlul Sunnah, the earth does not decompose and take the blessed body of any of the Anbiya. Not just the Prophet Muhammad, of any of the Anbiya. The earth preserves their blessed bodies. So we have that belief. We have that conviction for you to come and to taunt us and to say that you believe that his body will be crumbled, his body will be taken away or to show disrespect to his body. We believe in that creed that his blessed body will be preserved and is preserved inside the grave. Likewise, you find the Quran mentioned the end of Surah Al-Kahf. Indeed, I'm only a human being like you. But the only distinction is Allah has inspired me, given revelation to me. And highlighted to me, فَمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ لِقَاءَ رَبِّهِ فَلْيَعْمَلْ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا وَلَا يُشْرِكْ بِعِبَادَةِ رَبِّهِ أَحَدًا The 18th chapter of the Quran, verse 110. If you aspire to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then associate no partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Live a life of pure devotion, pure commitment, and righteous actions if you aspire to return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Likewise, you find, can you praise Him more than the Creator? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions inside the Quran, تَبَارَكَ الَّذِي نَزَّلَ الْفُرْقَانَ عَلَىٰ عَبْدِهِ لِيَكُونَ لِلْعَالَمِينَ نَذِيرًا تَبَارَكَ الَّذِي نَزَّلَ الْفُرْقَانَ عَلَىٰ عَبْدِهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Blessed be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who sent down the criteria, sent down the Quran عَلَىٰ عَبْدِهِ upon his servant. Challenge Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You say, why do you use the word servant? Why do you use the word abd? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying he is the servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Likewise, the beginning of Surah Al-Isra, the 17th chapter of the Quran, Subhan al-Ladhi asra bi'abdihi layla min al-masjid al-haram ila al-masjid al-aqsa al-ladhi barakna hawlahu li nuriyahu min ayatina innahu huwa al-sami'u al-alim. Blessed be Allah, innahu al-sami'u al-basir. Subhan al-Ladhi, blessed be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who took his servant from the blessed land of Mecca all the way to the furthest masjid. That is the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon this servant. Took him from that blessed land all the way to Masjid al-Aqsa and even further than that. To show him our signs. Indeed, that is a great sign for the messenger. What is the belief of these individuals about the messenger? Amongst the prominent individuals, he's going to pretend he's not one of our sheikhs, we don't believe in him. But he holds exactly the same belief as what you believe in. This Dr. Tahir al-Qadri, what is his beliefs? 
The Quran says, Subhan al-Ladhi asra bi'abdihi layla min al-masjid al-haram ila al-masjid al-aqsa. In a famous lecture that he delivers about his dreams that he sees. The Quran said, Blessed is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who takes his servant from Masjid al-Haram all the way to Masjid al-Aqsa. Mr. Tahir al-Qadri, doctor, he highlights inside a dream, it is emotion, that's all they work upon, emotions. Begins to weep and begins to cry. Aqa came to me. The beloved one came to me. He came to me in a dream. He came where? To Pakistan. He came in a dream to you. And he came in front of me and he complained to me. And he said that the ulama of Pakistan have not respected me in a proper manner. They haven't taken care of me and I've come to you. And I'm pay putting the responsibility upon you. That is your task and your job to take care of me. My food, my drink and my return. And look at his foolishness. Return ticket to fly back to Medina. The Quran says, Subhanallah, Asra bi abdihi layla min al masjid al haram ila al masjid al aqsa. He has to fly back on what? PIA? <laughs> Saudi Arabian Airlines? You have to organize his ticket flight back to Medina. Wretched individual. That's what you call Gustafi Rasul. That's what you call Gustafi Rasul to say he needs a ticket to go back to Medina. How did he come to you in the first place? How did he come to you in the first place? Weeping away in your dreams. And then he tries to highlight, you don't understand my dreams. Of course you don't understand your kufr and your shirk. Tries to pretend. He's trying to hide behind this verse. Indeed, the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there's no fear, no regret upon them, no grief upon them. They have a glad tidings inside this dunya. He says, This is my bushra. This is my glad tidings given to me. These are the glad tidings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what he believed in. And then some years later, you find can't make up his mind, can he? He's cutting a cake with a Christian priest. It's all one way. It's all one religion. Christianity, Judaism, Hinduism, whatever it may be. We are brothers cutting a cake with your Christian brothers. Clapping as well. Clap. Hurry, clap. Holding the candle as well. Go and visualize it for yourself. That's your great sheikh. That's his real belief of kufr. Pure kufr. That's what it is. And to say that he is a spiritual individual. Or to defame us, you don't believe in the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who says we don't believe in the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? We don't believe in the way that you believe in the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To do silly things, excuse the expression, do stupid things. And to say that's a sign of a wali. To lie naked on the streets and say that's a wali. To eat leaves on the tree and say that's a wali. That's what they believe. That these people, ponj gen call Allah they call. That's what they are. You don't understand. You don't understand nothing about these people. What do you mean you don't understand nothing about these people? Man walking about naked on the streets. He's a saint of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I saw a man with my own eyes. With my own eyes walking around his underpants. Some months later, they built a great big tomb, a great big shrine. Said it wasn't like you, some stingy individual from the UK. He was a kind individual who built this tomb. Nanga Baba. <laughs> a man I saw him with my own eyes walking naked on the streets, just his underpants. Everything for them is Sharif. Ajmer Sharif. You can't get to Ajmer Sharif. What should you do then? Send us a 50 pound check, isn't it? And we send you some of the dust for blessings of the shrine. We'll book your hotels when you come. Gangol Sharif. Bari Imam. And now around the corner, isn't it? We've got it, isn't it? Gangol Sharif around the corner now, isn't it? Getting ready to bury the saint and their beads there. Where's the Sharif anyway? Everything can become Sharif for you. There's only three blessed places that Muslim travels to. Masjid al-Haram, the Masjid the of the Prophet Muhammad and Masjid al-Aqsa. Other than that, any other place is questionable. But for them, they believe that to come to the tombs of the saints, of the relics, is spirituality. You know, amongst the Aqa'id, their belief is amongst their belief about this concept of coming through the saints. That the way towards to come close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to hold fast to the saint. Whoever doesn't have a wali, he will never come close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is amongst their beliefs that these individuals, they want to highlight. Likewise, you find all types of kufr and shirk that begin to take place. Washing their shrines and their graves with milk. Go to Data Darbar, go to Lahore. Go to Lahore and visualize it. They wash the man's grave with milk. With milk, Hindu rituals. 
cover it with milk, wash it with milk, and say this is supposed to be some form of tabarrak, some form of blessings. Whereby the Prophet Muhammad said, sent Ali towards the end of his life, any grave that you find beyond a hand span, dismantle it, break it apart. That's what he said to Ali anhu. He didn't say build great big tombs. You heard about a 40 foot tomb? Which man is 40 foot long? How can it be a 40 foot tomb that exists? But for them, they will travel, exert their efforts to come to these shrines and to rub their heads upon these shrines, dance on these shrines, smoke drugs on these shrines, do all types of haram action in these shrines, to mesmerize the masses. This is ways of getting close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you just sit there. They allowed their followers to dance in front of them. Did the messenger ever allow any companion to dance in front of him? Did he ever allow any messenger to kiss his feet? But for you, it's allowed for people to kiss your feet because we can't understand the Sharia. It's allowed for women to touch your hands because we can't understand the Sharia. No strange woman ever touched the blessed hand of the Prophet Muhammad never in his life. But for you, it's allowed because you have special privileges that have been given to you. And likewise, they believe that you can visualize the Prophet Muhammad openly, not just in a dream. We believe Ahl Sunnah in a dream. Man ra'ani fil manam faqad ra'ani. Whoever sees me in a dream has indeed seen me. If you know what the shama'il, you know what the khuluk of the Prophet Muhammad is or are. But these people, they believe they take it a step further. You can visualize him with your naked eye. You can visualize him openly. He can come in front of you, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's what their creed and their belief is. And this all goes back to the pinnacle point of Mawlidun Nabi. The birthday of the Prophet Muhammad They try to say it's only Sunnah. It's only Mu'akkada. But it's a pinnacle point of their Aqa'id. If you don't believe in the birthday of the Prophet Muhammad you're anti kharij You're away from Ahl Sunnah. You are no longer part of Ahl Sunnah. That has become the symbol of their belief. You believe in Mawlidun Nabi, you are a true believer. And my simple words to these individuals, one simple word that I challenge these individuals, bring me one simple hadith. One single hadith. And I'll even open up the doors, bring a fabricated hadith, a weak hadith from the Sunan, bring it to me. Whereby the Prophet Muhammad specifically said, don't forget to celebrate my birthday. Don't bring me, I was born on a Monday, I fast on a Monday, I fast on a Thursday. The gates of paradise are open on a Monday or on a Thursday. Or bring the verse from the Quran, قُلْ بِفَضْلِ اللَّهِ وَبِرَحْمَتِي فَبِذَلِكَ فَلْيَفْرَحُ هُوَ خَيْرٌ مِمَّا يَجْمَعُونَ Let us rejoice in his blessing. They say this blessing is referring to the blessing of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ulama Tafasir mentioned the siyak of the ayat of rejoicing is the blessing of the Quran and the blessing of the Sunnah. There is no clear-cut hadith. There is no clear-cut hadith. There is no hadith that exists. But they want to play on the emotions of people to say that this is the real love, the real devotion. Remember, everything about his blessed life has been documented. The way he urinated, the way he laughed, the way he wept, the way he talked, the way he slept, the way he kissed his wife, the way he done everything inside his life. Billahi alaykum. If every single thing has been documented, every single book of hadith, why is there not one single hadith? If I'm Gustafi Rasul, if I'm blaspheming against the messenger, we spend all our life reading for his sunan, all our life reading for his ahadith. Ulama of ahadith, ahadith, ulama of ahadith spend all of their life searching to find the statements of the Prophet Muhammad All of a sudden, you found it. All of a sudden, you found it. And even more than that, you found it before Abu Bakr. You found it before Umar. You found it before Uthman. You found it before Ali. Were they too busy? That you found his birthday and they never found his birthday. Does it make sense to you? You found it, they never found it. And likewise, the rest of the companions. Bilal, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, after the, the demise of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu he stopped giving the adhan. You want to play on people's emotions? Bilal stopped giving the adhan. He said, كَيْفَ أُؤَذِّنْ How can I carry on when I come to أَشْهَدُ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ وَالرَّسُولَ اللَّهِ No longer in front of me. He's no longer in front of me. I can't say these words anymore. Stop giving the adhan. Only on two occasions in his life did he ever come back and give the adhan. And all of the companions they wept when they heard the adhan. Wantum juhan. Before the adhan, you begin to give the root. Did Bilal ever give the root before the adhan? Did he ever give them the root before the adhan? Ever in his life? Do you love the messenger more than Bilal? Do you love him more than the messenger? Do you? You don't. It's a false practice. Before the adhan, read the darood. Which hadith is it? Which hadith does it exist in? You admit it's a false hadith. And you want to show that you love the messenger more than Bilal. 
You love the messenger more than the companions. You're liars. You're liars. That's what you are in your face. You're liars. There's no doubt about that in my life. The biggest liars you are. On the day of judgment, the messenger will say to you, Sultan, Sultan, be off, be off. You are liars. You are people who attributed to me words that never existed. You attributed practices to me that never existed. You are people who attributed these false liars. That's what will be said to these individuals. There's no doubt about that. There's no time to chew our words anymore. People want to say that we chew our words about these individuals. They want to say that we are the individuals who blaspheme against him. We're the ones that defamed him. We're the ones that dishonor him. We're the ones that degrade him. When in our lives have we ever degraded him? In our lives. Never in our lives. Searching throughout our lives. And Nabi Yu'ola bil mu'minina min anfusihim. The messenger, the prophet is closer to us than even our own souls. Our own souls. For you, who's closer to you? Who are the people close to you? The mafia industry around you. These people will kill to defend their awliya, their peeps. They will kill you to defense of their people. Not defense of the haq. Not the defense of the truth. Not the defense of Islam. It's because you outspoke against these individuals. That's what their belief is. That's what their creed is. Likewise, you find the concept of hazard wa nazar. Attendance. They believe that the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, attends their gatherings. So when they have these celebrations, they tell people to stand up because Hazur has just entered into the room. That's their belief. They place a kutsi, they place a chair there. And they begin to read their durood and they say the messenger is now coming, he's now entering, everybody stand and let the messenger sit on that chair. What is that? That's not blaspheming against the messenger. Did the companions forget to put a chair inside the blessed masjid of Medina? Did they ever forget that in their life? And say that the messenger is coming now, everybody rise. That's what they believe happens to be. Likewise, you find amongst their belief, they highlight, if you celebrate the Mawlid, there will be peace and rest in the person's life. Where's the peace and rest in the blessed land of Pakistan at the moment? That's your creed. Whoever celebrates Mawlid or Nabi, there will be Al-Aman. There will be peace and tranquility upon those people in that land. Where's the peace and tranquility in that land at the moment? That you are the great bearing the flag of the messenger sallallahu you depict your belief in the sandal what do you write in the sandal you write the name of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on that sandal even though it happens to be the sandal depicting the blessed sandal of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. that sandal when he gave it to abu huraira was to show that i am the messenger that's all it depicts we don't need to symbolize ourselves with a sandal or kiss the sandal or to find strands of his blessed bed at that time, if it existed, there is tabarruk, there's no doubt about that, inside his saliva, inside his sweat, inside his remnants, it exists. But today, what proof, what evidence do you have? That that which you hold today, that which you hold today is remnants of the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. Get a strand of his beard, start doing who, 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 start doing dhikr. When did the Prophet Muhammad said who, 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 when did he do that? When did he do that in his life? Turn off the lights, doing your dhikr. And then when the blessed hair begins to move, look, Baba Tako, even the, the ball of the Azur begins to move as well. You foolish individuals, it's basic, basic physics. The law of motion. If all of you begin to blow today, something this paper will begin to move. That's what it is. But they're trying to say, look, even the, the hair, the strand is going in thicker. It's moving and swaying with the thicker. <laughs> That's what they're saying, it's moving with the dhikr, the blessed strand of the Prophet Muhammad That's what their belief is. Talismans, threads, peer sahab. Tell us what to do in Iraq. Tell us what to do in Afghanistan. You tell the world everything, don't you? Lord, get a pad and pad, it's on the pad and then, isn't it? They kiss your feet, they throw their money at you, they throw flowers at you. Now you're the one that helps, you're the one that saves. A peer sahab, man, throw their pad, pakna. Tell us what to do in Iraq today. Tell us what to do in Iraq today. Tell us what to do in Afghanistan today. Leave these wings. These are politics. These are politics. Your whole life has been politics. Robbing the wealth of the people and spending it on your politics. Robbing their wealth in daylight. Robbing their wealth in daylight. Taking it away to your own personal causes. We've moved about with this mafia industry. We've moved about with them. They can't come and trick me and say you don't know anything. We lived with their sons. We lived with their gaddi machines, 
their sons were promised that when you come back, son, you're going to be the next speed. You're going to be the next chef. We lived with them all night listening to Bollywood songs. Not even getting up and praying Fajr in the morning and saying, I'm going to be the next speed. I'm going to be the next saint. I blow on people's raw teacher party, give it to them. Go, you're blessed individuals. Those days have gone to those previous saints of good individuals that existed before. That's all that their life is placed upon, these corruptions. Likewise, you find they begin to say, you don't do enough durood. You don't say no durood and no salam upon the Prophet Muhammad. Who says that? Lie upon lie. Whoever does not say, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Bakhil, man the stingy one is the one that I mentioned does not send the salutations upon me. The Quran is quite clear. Inna Allah wa malaikatu yusalluna ala nabi Ya yuladina amanu sallu alayhi yusallimu taslima Oh, you believe? Indeed, Allah and His Messenger, they send their salutations, greetings upon the Messenger. Oh, you believe? Send those salutations, send those greetings. Who said we don't believe in the salutations and greetings? Just because we don't stand and say, Ya Rasulallah, start shouting out the way the kafir that you have. Where does that exist? Because we don't do that. But it's part of our creed. The most closest individual to the messenger will be the one who makes the durood, who makes the salam. On Yawmul Jum'ah, فَأَخْثِرُوا عَلَيَ salam. On the day of Yawmul Jum'ah, send the salutations, increase the salutations. These are the false concepts they want to throw upon Ahlul Hadith. These are the false concepts they want to throw upon what they claim that we are Wahhabiyun, which is a title invented by the British colonialism at that time upon the people who strove against them. The people who fought against them were only a certain group of individuals. And as they placed this statement, of anybody who goes away to dispel or to remove the concept of grave worship or stand for the truth, they're classified as a Wahhabi even to this day that we find. Likewise, we find in conclusion of the day of judgment, it be said to these individuals, the Quran mentions, These people will say on the day of judgment, we followed or we obeyed Sadatana. We obeyed yani our teachers, our elders. And they estrayed us from the path. Simple message to a simple Muslim. Every single day inside your life, you always look for that which will benefit you. That which will benefit you inside this dunya. Why do you become so shallow inside the akhirah? And say, whatever that person tells me, I'll take it. On that day of judgment, you're going to make these calls. That our teachers and our leaders, they are the ones that sent us astray. And that station is going to be too late. Likewise, the Quran mentions, follow that which has been sent down upon you don't follow the awliya don't follow the saints don't follow the pious individuals little it is that you ponder and you reflect we follow that which has been sent down that's the ayah of standing for the test of time. You claim to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, follow the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad throughout your lives. And as we mentioned, if the sunnah is complete, if Islam is complete, you don't need to add something and you don't need to take anything away. Whatever was deemed yesterday has to be deemed today. That's how simple it is. That's the message that we're delivering to the Muslims. وَمَنْ يُشَاقِكِ الرَّسُولِ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا تَبَيَّنَ لُلْهُدَى وَيَتَّبِعْ غَيْرَ سَبِيلِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ نُوَلِّهِ مَا تَوَلَّى وَنُسْلِهِ جَهَنَّمَ وَسَأَدْ مَصِيرًا Whoever contends with the messenger of the truth has been shown to that individual and follows a path other than the way of the believers, other than the way of the companions, that individual's refuge, final destination will be none other than the hellfire. And that is the message that we need to deliver to our own selves and to this wider community, to bring them out of this kufr, to bring them out of this shit. That the, the individual that we follow blindly in our life is the messenger. He is infallible in the sense that whatever he told us to do, we carry that out. Everything in our ibadah. Our ibadah, tawfiqiyah. Ibadah is restricted. Whatever the messenger told us to do, we do exactly the same thing and practice that in our life. There's no need for us to come and do something extra. We follow the teachings of the Quran and Sunnah the way it's been highlighted. This concept of tawassul, Al Bid'i, his way of coming, finding intermediaries and intercessions to come close to the Messenger, come close to the Awliya, come close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is all away from the path of Ahl Sunnah. And as these individuals need to be taught that lesson and send that message out to these individuals that your creed is a corrupt creed. Your creed is a creed that goes against the real belief of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all the
pristine and orthodox views and ability to remain steadfast to the teachings of qala allahu wa qala rasul wa qala sahaba throughout our life to yearn and to stay upon that and never lose track upon whatever exists outside us to fall into a trap that may be this and may be that this is a long path a long commitment towards allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and let not these people deter us from the truth and to deliver the message to these people appropriately wa qulu qawli hadha wa astaghfiru li wa lakum wa li jami'il muslimin fa astaghfiru inna huwal ghafur rahim subhanak subhanak allahumma wa bihamdik shukran la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik barakallahu feekum